TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK and all around the world. You see behind me a little warning screen just in case, man. Um, also, I got these glasses on. I just want to let anybody who's new watching, I don't wear these on an everyday basis. I got a sty on my eye and the light makes it hurt. So, we don't miss a lot of days. So, got to get it done, man. Got to use some protection. Anyway, this is 10 Corrupt Cops Insane Reaction to Life Prison. It's crazy that I got this got these glasses on during this reaction. I, also, I, I look like a state trooper. That's tough. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Verdict, count one, actual battery. I'm not we the lie. jury impaneled and sworn in the above. This should be good. Now, I do admit there are some, I mean, I haven't run into many, but there is, I guess, apparently some good cops out there. But it's cops like these that give a bad rep for them all. So, especially in that type of job, like, it's easily it's easy to be looked at as they're all bad if one is bad. I don't even care. Of entitled cause your opponent or O's find as follows. Defendant is guilty of the crime of sexual battery and set punishment at eight years. Your Honor, please do not send me to prison. I have wrong, but I'm not ruined. Man, shut your bitch ass up. <laughs> you going to jail, officer? <laughs> yes. My bad. Do you believe that Eric DeWapner saved your life on December 19th, December 3rd, 2019? There are tissues behind you. Yes. We're supposed to be able to trust police officers to keep us safe. They are the people that we depend on to help us when we are in danger. But sometimes, sadly, it is police officers themselves that are the true danger to our safety. The following stories tell the tale of 10 corrupt police officers who thought they were above the law and did some pretty horrific things. These individuals are now paying the price for their actions by spending the rest of their life. Who channel is this? Anna Horror Stories? Salute, Anna. Let me go ahead and subscribe to you. Hit that like button. <laughs> Thank you for bringing me this. Lives behind bars. Got my popcorn. Daniel Holtzclaw. Daniel Holtzclaw was a member of the Oklahoma City Police Department who used his power as a law enforcement officer to manipulate and harm. Oklahoma is a little iffy out there anyway, man. Oklahoma as a whole. The age of consent is 17 or something like that. That is crazy. 21 and up for me, buddy. And, and hey, I'm taken. <laughs> 30 and up for me, buddy. From African American women between December 20th, enforcement officer, member of the Oklahoma City Police Department, who used his power as a law enforcement officer to manipulate and harm African American women between December 2013 and June of 2014. He would purposefully search for women who had active warrants out or who had been in trouble with the law before. He would also specifically look for women of low income communities. Once he found his targets, he would take advantage of very premeditated very very ungiving of justice them jolly and force them to do things against their will his victims included eight different women it wasn't until june 18th 2014 that he would make the mistake that would ultimately cost him not only his career but his freedom while driving back to his home in his police issued vehicle daniel would end up making a traffic stop but he did not report this traffic stop to the police dispatch, as is procedure. Instead, 
he quickly ran the records for the driver before logging off his computer. The driver of this vehicle was a 57-year-old woman named Janie Liggins. Janie was from a poor area like the rest of the women that Bro, I didn't care about age, nothing. Like, it doesn't matter, but like, he was, he was relentless. I ain't never heard about this. Hold on, let me sit up. Because now I'm gonna talk crazy. I gotta talk a lot now. Daniel would usually target. However, she had no prior criminal record and was not afraid to report him for what he forced her to do. This in mm, you got the right one, unfortunately. Included not only forcing her to take off her clothes, but to then perform an intimate act on him. Throughout the horrific ordeal, Janie was terrified and would later say that she begged him to spare her life. The following day, Daniel was brought in for questioning. He was interviewed for two hours, during which time he completely denied everything that happened with Janie. He claimed he pulled over Janie because he saw her vehicle swerved. He then said that she appeared nervous and even crying. She was also unable to provide him with a valid driver's license. He explained that he had Janie step out of the vehicle so that he could pat search her. Did your hands go on her at all? I backhanded, I backhanded her on as far as the side. Where on her body? Tell me, you like backhanded? Her waist, her waist, and the back portion. I didn't touch her butt or anything, but the back portion and the waist. And then she lifted it up like right here. The investigator, who has been playing extremely friendly so far, finally breaks it to Daniel that Janie has accused him of misconduct but showing how much experience as an investigator she really has still led Daniel to believe that she believed he had done nothing wrong well was there anything damn this investigator pulled a him on him like cop, that's what cops lead you to do when they sit you in this chair like no you good brother just tell me just open up I'm cool let me let me let me bamboozle you into telling me everything I need to know he finna get the okie doke an accidental touch of anything. If she thought it uh, when I passed her, her, but I didn't lose nothing as far as I felt like I would do anything as far as or anything like that. And for my safety, I just checked to see the weapons or anything. At the conclusion of the interview, the interrogators came to the conclusion that they believed he was being untruthful and he was soon removed from the force. He was arrested in August 2014 and eventually charged with 36 counts of different 36? offenses. During the trial, DNA taken from one of the victims, who was an underage girl, was traced back to Daniel. The case was brought before a jury and he was convicted. Count Good. eight. Get him Defendant off is guilty of the crime of forcible oral anatomy and punishment is set at 20 years. <laughs> Count nine. Been the first. Who the hell crying in the audience? That gotta be his mom. Degree. <laughs> Defendant is not guilty of the crime of in the first degree. In total, Daniel was sentenced to 253 years behind bars. He yes. is now 36 years old and remains behind bars. Great job. And this is the policing that I mean. The police officers that catch the bad police officers. This is this is beyond. I am un, it's unfortunate unfortunate circumstances. But get these dudes off the street, buddy. Derek, Derek Siobhan was a Siobhan. former police officer from Minneapolis, Minnesota. He is infamously associated with the death of George Floyd, an unarmed African-American man. Prior to the death of George Floyd, Derek had 18 different complaints on his record. On May 18. Let's, let's not even talk about the George Floyd incident. Let's talk about the 18 previous incidents that went unchecked. Why is he still on the force with 18 of them? Bro, almost got a dub. 25th, 2020, George was accused of trying to use a counterfeit $20 bill at a market. When Derek and other officers arrived, they claimed that George tried to resist being arrested. Body camera footage that later- That's the first thing they do. You're resisting. See now when you, and like I, I've been, I've been arrested and down at the station before. One of the first charges they give you every time is resisting. At least what I was dealing with, I always got had release re resisting. I'm a, every time. <laughs> it's just it's just to cover them. 
later came out showed Derek kneeling on George's neck for a significant period of time. During that time, George could be heard crying out that he couldn't breathe. George would eventually die in police custody. Several bystanders witnessed these events and recorded videos that were shared online. These videos sparked massive outrage throughout the country and many people began to march in protest. Derek was later arrested and charged with third degree murder and manslaughter and was eventually found guilty by a jury trial. As a sentence for count one, the court commits you to the custody of the Commissioner of Corrections for a period of 270 months, that's 270. That is a 10 year addition to the presumptive sentence of 150 months. This is based on your. Is that concurrently the 150 and 270? Because he's still in there, ain't he? Uh, abuse of a position of trust and authority. Michael Dotro. I knew about that one is a former police officer from New Jersey who set fire to the home of another police officer that was superior to him. The officer and his family were asleep in the home at the time. Luckily, they managed to escape the burning home. Police on police crime. That's unheard of, isn't there? It's a br brotherhood, ain't it? Home with their lives. Michael was charged and convicted of attempted murder and has since been called a monster for his horrific actions. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison behind bars. Considering his age, it is possible he will not be seeing life as a free man again. Yeah, he, buddy could, especially if he were general population, which he's probably not. But he probably with the, the, the weird people, the weirdos in there. So he's probably not with general population because of his past job, but nevertheless, you cooked, buddy. The judge chastised him, telling him that he caused immense harm, not only on the victims and their family, but to all of the community. He also sent a message that there are officers who cannot be trusted, despite what their badges might say. The only way I, Facts. I, can, make, I can make sense of the sentence, and I also want everyone to understand where I'm coming from with regards to this, especially if there's going to be any appellate review of this sentence. I want those judges to know the sentence to be imposed in this particular case is because Mr. Dotro, through his conduct and his admissions, spanning 1998 to this year, represents the worst that we can possibly expect from someone in our society. Talk to him, Judge. At the end of the day, man, I be feeling like I'm a pretty good judge of character. And just by the way by some police be talking, you can tell. And I'm not talking about if they just a-holes, you know what I'm saying? Some of them could just be overly nice. And, and them, them the ones you got to watch out for, too. I don't put it past nobody out here. Zach Wester is a former North Florida deputy. He was found guilty of planting narcotics on innocent drivers who had done nothing wrong. In most cases, these people were pulled over for minor traffic offenses, only to soon be carried off to jail for narcotics charges. There were 27 different victims in this case who suffered tremendously. Oh, ruining lives out here ruining lives out here this 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 what narcotics are you placing in i'm pretty sure they're class a's so you're, you're putting felony charges on innocent some innocent people this is crazy you're ruining their lives now i'm pretty sure they got nicely compensated but still what about the time that passed you know what i'm saying as a result of zach's actions zach who is the son of a prominent lawman, was initially praised by the community for the number of arrests that he was able to make. The only problem was that many of those arrests were totally bogus charges. It wasn't until the summer of 2018 that prosecutors began to think something fishy was going on with Zach and his arrests. They saw- Ow, yeah, hold on. I need to know how y'all figured it out. 
began to think something fishy was going on with Zach and his arrests. They saw inconsistencies in what he was putting on police reports and what was being shown in his police body cam videos. In one particular video, Zach could be seen carrying a plastic baggie in his hand before searching a woman's pickup truck. He then arrested her for the drugs that he planted. Zach was eventually arrested in 2019 and found guilty of racketeering, fabricating evidence, misconduct, false imprisonment, and possession of drugs and paraphernalia. That's what I was about to say. How did he even get a hold of these items? You know what I'm saying? He couldn't be taking them out of the lockup at, at the station because, you know, those, that stuff is logged, but... Like, brother, you're going, you're going the extra mile to ruin people's lives. Why are you in this position? Like, did your father not praise you enough growing up as a child? Like, good job, good job. So now you had to go, and you just love that feeling of catching somebody and getting that praise, so you just had to replicate it no matter what? That's weird. You, you, get him off the streets. You're going to jail, buddy. He denied any wrongdoing. <laughs> were there. I did not put the narcotics here. Watch Zach question an innocent man after he planted drugs in his vehicle. You can only imagine how scared and confused this victim must have been. They say something that appears to be an illegal narcotic. Do you know anything about that? I do not. The victims had an opportunity to speak ahead of Zach's sentencing. You, Mr. Wester, you've robbed me of my credibility being a mother and a grandmother for the last three years, I've probably missed a year and a half of my grandbaby's life because of this. Um, I wish you no ill will, and you'll never know what you've done to me until you have children of your own, so. Zach, dressed in an orange jumpsuit and- How much time did he get? Wearing a face mask, could be seen wiping away tears as his sentence was read aloud. Brother, don't cry tears now. You ain't even sad that you did this to these innocent people. You sad that you got caught. Zach was sentenced to 12 and a half years behind bars. That's not enough. How many victims? 27? 12 and a half years? He should have got a year for every victim. Oh, no cap. <laughs> Eric DeValconaire Eric is a former police detective from Kansas City, Missouri. On December 3rd of 2019, he and killed Cameron Lamb, an unarmed black man. The shooting occurred at Cameron's home. He and his partner, Troy Schwalm, at Cameron's home, huh? reportedly entered Cameron's property with no warrant and without the homeowner's permission. There was no active pursuit and no apparent reason for three kids, huh? Cameron to have been detained. He did own a gun, but it was found on the floor of the garage, not on his person. Also, prior to the shooting, Troy said that he saw Cameron's hands on the steering wheel of his vehicle. In other words, he was not holding a gun or presenting any threat. Eric was charged with involuntary manslaughter. Friends and family members of George Floyd, Jacob Blake, and Oscar Grant are in town for the trial. We're not asking, we're demanding. We come in from all over the country. We're not gonna stand still and let's th let this continue to happen to us over and over again. In the end, a judge, not a jury, will decide DeValconeer's fate. The trial was yeah, very trial controversial. Was One particularly emotional moment was when Troy Schwalm took to the stand to talk about the events that occurred leading up to Cameron's death. Sergeant Schwalm, do you believe that Eric DeValconeer saved your life on December 19th? It's December. And it's that brotherhood stuff. And, and, and you know, he's trying to save his friend from going to jail. But not at the expense of somebody, like, taking a life. You know what I'm saying? 3rd, 2019. There are tissues behind me. Yes. Sergeant Troy Schwalm's face was twisted up, holding back tears. The charge against Eric DeVolcanier is involuntary... Fake tears. ...terry manslaughter, a death as the... Involuntary tears result of recklessness. The prosecutor had harsh words for Eric's actions leading up to Cameron's death. Careful and responsible police officers protect our citizens in their own homes. Careless 
and irresponsible police officers citizens in their own homes. Cameron Lamb was slowly backing into his garage when the two officers ran through the yard at him. The prosecution says DeVolcanier fired four shots into Lamb's truck, killing him. Even though... Immediately? Like, what was... What happened? Like, what was the whole case? Like, that is crazy. He was backing in his garage and he fired four shots. Sergeant Schwamm says Eric shot Cameron to save his life. It's not clear why Eric felt the need to him at all because there right. was no perceived threat. Cameron was on his own property and wasn't doing anything wrong. He has no warrant. He has no probable cause. Oh, and he has this kind of garage. The garage that's under the house. So you really gotta be... No information about any crime other than a traffic offense. But the defense said that Eric and Troy had pursued Cameron because he was driving recklessly at speeds exceeding 90 miles an hour. He also had two children in the back of his vehicle. He had been chasing after his girlfriend at the time, but ultimately made the decision to discontinue the chase and return back to his house. This still doesn't explain why Eric thought shooting Cameron was necessary. Back in 2019, police said crime scene investigators found Lamb's left arm hanging out the window and a gun on the ground below it. Schwalm testified he did not- Oh, so they set him up too hear a gun drop to the ground. The prosecution accused Eric of planting a gun on the garage floor to make it look wow. like he actually had a reason to and kill Cameron. Eric denied this. He tearfully explained what he said happened leading up to Cameron's death. He could barely get the words out. He takes his left hand with the gun and as he brings it along up and around the left hand side of the steering wheel is when I... stop you right there buddy i don't believe you he has his kids in the back of the car why would he do that you know what i'm saying i just i just it's just hard for me to believe any of the things you're saying and then especially when you do this with your hand to to wipe a fake tear off like buddy no cut it out no tears my focus moves from that weapon to the center of his chest. And still, no information about a crime. The prosecutor grilled him about entering the home without a warrant. No, no weapon of any kind that were in your mind that you knew about. No information like that at the time. You are now entering private, private property, property without a warrant, without, a without warrant. probable cause. Without probable cause. This is not the UK we're here. <laughs> Buddy, you, 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 it, you wouldn't even had a pistol in the UK. You know what I'm saying? Unless you were a firearms trained officer. But that's not even, that's neither here nor there. Brother, you, no warrant, no probable cause, private property. You're down bad. No concern about collateral damage with kids in the back. Nothing. With your gun drawn. True? As all officers in my situation would have done. But the defense tried to paint Eric as a hero who did what he had to do in order to save Troy's life. Did you have time to get a warrant? No, I did not. Did you have a duty to protect your partner? Yes, I did. And do you believe that you ultimately saved his life? Yes, I do. The prosecutor discussed how little time Eric took before making the decision that would ultimately lead to Cameron's death. Nine seconds from the time you start to encounter this individual without a probable cause, without a warrant, without knowing what crime, before you pull the trigger. Nine seconds. Nine seconds. That means he did it with all intentions. He ain't, he ain't wanted to figure nothing out. He was ready to drill something. Before he presents the weapon in a threatening manner, correct? Yes, nine seconds. Yes. Ultimately, it would be up to the judge presiding over the case to determine whether or not this was manslaughter or a matter of self-defense. How much time? The court is further compelled to find beyond a reasonable doubt that when defendant shot and killed Cameron Lamb, number one, defendant was not acting in lawful self-defense. Number two, defendant was not acting in lawful defense of Sergeant Schwamm. 
and three, it being conceded that defendant and Sergeant Schwamm were not affecting an arrest of Cameron Lamb or preventing his escape after an arrest. The judge ended up declaring that Eric and Sergeant Schwamm broke the law by even- Oh, both of them, okay coming onto the property in the first place Facts. and that escalated the situation in a way that it never needed to be he also said that they exhibited negligence and poor judgment at this point troy knows that's what a lot of people don't understand the police have to abide by the law as well man you can if you don't know the law how can you be the law you know what i'm saying and you think you're bigger than the law like bro just because you have a badge does not mean that you can break the law you know what I'm saying? You have to be in imminent real danger. And all that coming on the private property and this, this, and the third. Dude, that's why I want to own my own house. Not saying that I'm going to be doing nothing crazy, but get off my property to anybody. I'm in America. I got constitutional rights to protect this. And I will. Knows that things are not looking good for him, but watch his reaction as the official verdict is read aloud. As to count one, in which defendant is charged with the class C felony of involuntary manslaughter in the first degree, the court finds the defendant guilty of the lesser included offense of involuntary manslaughter in the second degree, a class E felony. As to count two, the unclassified felony of armed criminal action, the court finds the defendant guilty. Eric appeared to be blinking Nothing. rapidly but kept a straight face as he learned his fate. However, when the court concluded, he could be seen glancing at his lawyer and mouthing something before putting his head down in despair. In the background, you can hear what appears to be cheering coming from outside the courtroom, likely a reaction to the verdict. On Friday, March 4th, 2022, the judge would sentence Eric for his crime. The class E felony of involuntary manslaughter in the second degree, I sentence you to a term of incarceration in the Missouri Division of Adult Institutions. Oh, he in Missouri too. Of three years. On the unclassified felony of armed criminal action, I sentence you to a term of incarceration six. of six years in the Missouri. Did, are they gonna run concurrently or one after another? Missouri Department of Corrections. Those cases, or rather those counts and sentences, will run concurrent. With one another for a total term of incarceration of six years. Unless an appeal is approved, Eric will remain behind bars for the next six years. Following... Is this a fair case? He got to do 85% of his time or what? sentencing the judge did point out that despite there being a lot of civil unrest around the time of this crime associated with police officers being unarmed black men this was not comparable to the george floyd case he didn't have any history of violence and he didn't hunt cameron down however his actions are still the reason why cameron is no longer alive cameron lamb is dead eric devalconer killed him and the court has found that that happened because the defendant acted without considering or being aware of the substantial and unjustifiable risks associated with his conduct and that his actions were a gross deviation from the standard of care that a reasonable person would exercise in the situation. Cameron Lamb's parents spoke out after- All right. We would just be acting. A lot of people, but people, the human nature is to act without thinking in general, but just imagine the ramifications being amplified when you're in a position of power. Y'all like that? Hey, I learned when you use big words correctly, you sound smart. So I just try to throw that in there like that occasionally and things of that nature. After watching their son's killer get brought to justice, they were satisfied with the sentence that Eric received. It was. I'm not satisfied with the sentence, but continue. It was a fair decision. He still got a year for every second, them nine seconds. I don't care if you put them together or not. He got four, three years for one, and he got six years for another. So that's a year for each of them seconds that it took him to get so reckless with that gun of his. Cameron's parents also expressed wanting to spread awareness about the dangers of police recklessness in hopes that no more innocent people need to be killed by cops acting on impulse instead of rational thinking. As just gotta take a second to think. I know, like, it's a crazy position to be in if you're a cop, but you gotta have some type of, like, 
mental fortitude or like discretion or some type of something. You got to go in situations knowing like do your homework. You know what I'm saying? You can call in and be like, I got this suspect. Here's the plates. Can you run it? Tell me a little something about him so I can make a judgment call. You know what I'm saying? Or just hop out, respect private property. That's something that you can't come on to. Like, or something. Go get a warrant. If you are unsure, get your supervisor. As for now, Eric remains behind bars. Charlie Reader. Charlie Reader was once the sheriff of Pi- mm, This is giving me vibes. Go back, ma'am, start over. Charlie Reader was once the sheriff of Pike County in Ohio. Ohio. He was well known and respected when he became the face of an investigation into the worst crime county the state had ever seen, the Rodin Massacre. In this case, one family killed eight members of another family, but in 20 Damn. 2021, Sheriff Reeder was arrested and charged with theft and corruption, as well as tampering with evidence. He pleaded guilty. He was, he was on the payroll? ...given a chance to speak before he was sentenced was handed down. He apologized for his actions and asked for forgiveness. I stand here before you today to take accountability for the, my actions. As a sheriff of Ohio, I should... <clears throat> excuse me. I shed bad light on the office of sheriff. I can only ask that my staff, their families, the community, and my family who is here today will forgive me for the undue stress I caused them. For this, I am terribly sorry. He also asked for no prison. He asked for what? The audacity. Go. Time so that he could spend time with his aging parents while they were still alive. He begged to be sentenced to community service instead. Your Honor, please do not send me to prison. Look at Your Honor's face. She got that. She's already made her decision, buddy. You're going to jail. I have run, but I'm not run. I still have a lot of good left in me. I thank you for Look how quick she blinking. Uh -huh. You're fine. The judge didn't seem affected by his tears and ultimately not one bit. I already knew it. I didn't see this face before. Ultimately sentenced him to three and a half years in prison. He was released early in May of 2023. David Oliver. David Oliver was once the police chief of Brimfield, Massachusetts. He first became the chief in 2004 and was widely loved and respected. He has a book called No Mopes Allowed. He also had a big following on social media and hosted a talk show. But everything. See what I'm talking about? See what I remember I said earlier? They'd be the ones that be nice too. They'd be, they'd be putting on an act. <laughs> I know. I, I, hey changed in January of 2015 when he was you better be in the middle when you coming at me be in the middle don't be too mean don't be too nice just be in the middle I remember a, a, a fat cop called me fat I was like excuse me I know you not corrupt because that don't even make sense you got to be out your mind you know what I'm saying so I was I was cool with him you know what I'm saying I knew he was a good cop when he did that, and I was like, okay. He was forced to abruptly resign from his position. A female officer from his department had come forward and claimed that David had abused her emotionally, verbally, and physically. He pleaded no contest and was found guilty of a theft and unlawful restraint. In court, the female officer who had spoken out- Wait, what kind of assault? theft and unlawful restraint. In court, the female officer who had spoken out against him had a chance to share her story. Once again, I was painfully naive. I remember the first time David Oliver hugged me. It made me uncomfortable. 
I really liked him, but I wanted to make sure that the boundaries were clear. When I first started at Brimfield, another female officer tried to warn me. She told me to watch the chief and explain that he could get physically way over the line. He was very handsy, she, she, she said. I reassured her that I don't do that. Told you. It be the nice ones, man. It be the nice ones putting on that front for the media. Like, oh, no, he can't be like that. He's Look at all the camaraderie he has. That kind of thing, so I'd be fine. Would the judge throw the book at David or have mercy on the man, once so loved by the community? On the attempted theft in office, misdemeanor of the first degree, I'm going to sentence the defendant to 180 days of Fort County Jail. On the simple assault, misdemeanor of the first degree, I'm going to sentence the defendant to 180 days of Fort County Jail. On the unlawful restraint, misdemeanor of the third degree, I am going to sentence the defendant to 60 days of Portage County Jail. On the unauthorized use of property, misdemeanor of the first degree, I am going to sentence the defendant to 180 days of jail. Those sentences will run concurrent to one months. another. In total, he was sentenced to 20 months in prison for his crimes, followed by two years of probation, during which time he would not be permitted. It's six months. I guess like on, uh, on a rap sheet, it's going to say 20 months for X, these charges, but it's, it's six months total. Two years probation. To drive. He also had... He probably realistically did two months, maybe if that. But the, the probation was for the rest of the term and plus two years. To give up his certification to serve as a police officer. Since that time, David has been released from jail and is trying to rebuild his reputation as a public figure. He started a new business and began posting on his popular Facebook page once again. In an interview following his release from prison, he said he was trying to be a better person and viewed his time behind bars as God putting him in a timeout. Marcus Eberhardt was a former sergeant from Atlanta. One of the other officers that were- mm, Atlanta, he thought he was a red dog. I already know where this is going. Certain police in certain areas be thinking they like low key tough, like thugs or something. Like, man, you a police officer, just be that. You know what I'm saying? But don't- with them oh, attempted to former this. sergeant from atlanta one of the other officers that were with them attempted to put gregory into handcuffs but before he could the suspect ran off into the woods an officer managed to catch up to him and then successfully put him into handcuffs okay. when trying to get up gregory stumbled and then eventually fell he was told to get up again but said that he was too tired it was then that marcus told howard that if the suspect didn't want to get up then he he should just tase him. Gregory attempted once more to get up, but when he fell to the ground, both Marcus and Howard tased him. Paramedics were called to the scene, but by the time they arrived, Gregory's heart had stopped beating. He was pronounced what? dead. Marcus was charged with murder, and Howard was charged with involuntary manslaughter. Wait, why, why would they tase that man? Because he couldn't get up. He was clearly out of shape. When he took off running, y'all know he tired? This is what I be talking about. Like, for what? Why would you tase him? Former East Point police officers will head to prison. A Fulton County judge handing down the sentences for Fulton, former Sergeant Fulton Mark. Fulton County, too. Fulton County is a crazy county. They got the harshest. You can't do nothing in Fulton County. You going to jail if you do anything, sir. So. Marcus Eberhardt and former Corporal Howard Weems after a jury found them guilty in the 2014 tasing death of Gregory Towns. Mark received a life sentence while Howard Dang. received just 18 months behind bars. Nice. Following the sentencing, Azel Smith, the girlfriend of Gregory Towns, said that looking back, she wished she never would have called the police that day, that their coming was simply a disaster. She also says she carries... That's why you got to be careful who you date or who you like you know what i'm saying because we gotta remember man calling the police can be it can seem some a certain way but it can get out of hand it's a lot of guilt over what happened she believes if she hadn't called the police gregory would still be here i don't want to hear anything he has to say i just really don't want to hear anything he has to say um, I heard Fulton County got bogus cops too, a lot of them. 
Gregory's not here to respond for himself, so I did it for him. Reports say that Gregory was tased a total of 13 times. You see what I'm talking about? 13 times? That's not ridiculous. That's not a ridiculous number. The toll on his body was simply too great. See, and once again, the UK, they, you got to be taser trained to get a taser. I'm not saying that they're not taser trained. They probably are, but like, where was the... Let's just... just stupid. Daniel Saylor was once a police chief in Orange County, Florida, but in 2011, he was fired from the force. Here's the Florida case that I've been, I knew it was coming. After using his power and connections to a sexual battery offense that was committed by one of his friends. His friend, a man named Scott Bush, committed sexual battery to a child under the age of 12 oh, years old. Oh my God, Florida is... Daniel was also accused of accepting a bribe in order to hire another officer who sold photographs taken at the site of Tiger Woods' car crash in 2009. Daniel Saylor dropped his head when he heard the guilty verdict. It was role reversal. Windermere's former chief of police was the man being fingerprinted and handcuffed. Daniel was charged with perjury and corruption. At sentencing, Daniel said that he did not know what to see in response to the verdict, but could only ask that the judge have mercy on him. But the judge ultimately sentenced him to eight years behind bars. Prosecutor Ryan Williams felt the sentence was justified. As I told the court every day in this courtroom, we depend on people telling the truth. And if you don't tell the truth, there has to be ramifications for that. Daniel. 100%. 100% has since been released from prison after serving the entirety of his sentence. He said all eight years, okay. Good. Aaron Dean is a former police officer from Fort Worth. In 2019, Texas. he shot and killed a 28-year-old black woman named Atiana Jefferson. A neighbor had called and asked for a police officer to come out and do a wellness check at a home belonging to the victim's oh, mother. this is recent. I remember this. When he arrived at the scene, then 38-year-old Aaron shot at Tiana through a window. She had been in the living room playing video games with her 8-year-old nephew. Aaron resigned from the force and was later charged with manslaughter in- What was he doing? I don't even understand, like, what was the- Tiana's death. The very disturbing body cam footage from the incident was played in the courtroom. It showed Aaron approaching the house and eventually seeing Atiana inside. He yelled at her to put her hands up before immediately her. Aaron's partner, who was there that night, came forward to testify about what happened. Did you ever see a Tatiana's gun? No, ma'am. My, my, I saw her face. That burns in your memory. Yes, ma but when he was called forward to testify, Aaron what was his reason like insists he saw a Tatiana holding a gun and that he acted only in self-defense. What do you see? I just saw the silhouette of the person and the gun. I don't recall seeing hands, but I, I did see that weapon pointed at me. You're not saying the gun's on the floor. No, the gun was pointed directly at me. And about how high up on the silhouette was the gun in your mind when you're looking at this? Lies. Whatever he's about to say is a lie. Because you would know. I remember when I got shot at, it was up here. He blowing. The, <laughs> I remember the positioning and everything, buddy. Ain't no way you don't remember. Or it's taking this long. Maybe mid-chest, I'm, I'm not sure. Ultimately, the trial was put into the hands of the jury. He remained stone-faced and unemotional as the verdict was read aloud in the courtroom. Verdict reads, we the jury find the defendant Aaron, De Aaron York Dean guilty of the offense of manslaughter as signed and signed by the presiding juror. Aaron was ultimately sentenced to 11 years and 10 months behind bars. The family members of Atatiana Jefferson spoke highly of the young... Probably got them a little nut. Nothing can, no amount of money is comparable to a life loss, but they definitely seen some money.
woman whose life was taken far too soon. She was described as a woman with a bright future who dreamed of attending law school and had a lot of plans for her life. Sadly, these were plans she was never able to accomplish. The main lesson to be learned from these stories of these 10 corrupt cops is that it doesn't matter how much power or how many connections you think you have. If you break the law and take advantage of people, you will want- You're going to jail. Tia, leave a like, comment.